going to make the country go rioting and break up, you know, and be chaotic. Yeah, well, no, but Boris, you see, Brexit is as bad. Brexit is as silly for, for Britain as that silly prime minister in India's law. It's just as bonkers, right? And the British are pretty well behaved. You may not get too many riots, but you're getting, you've got some very disgruntled, upset people. And you've got, you know, riots, flashpoints and violence probably going to hit the streets of Belfast very, very soon after if this crazy Brexit goes ahead. Yeah, yeah. No, so look, I'm just saying, take the Indian lesson to your heart, Boris, and stop it, right? And then I'm also speaking on behalf of the Commonwealth Common Values Council, so I'm reading as a Canadian, I'm a dual citizen, on behalf of the Commonwealth. Yeah, it's the only interfaith group active in the Commonwealth, yeah. Yeah, it was set up in 97, actually at New College in, in Edinburgh, when the Commonwealth Heads of Government met, the Chogham. Yeah, you remember those Choghams? Yeah, they're fun, aren't they? Choghams, yeah. Yeah, so it was at a Chogham, and uh, I met the Secretary General of the Commonwealth, Chief Anya Oku, great African leader. Yeah, you see, I love the Commonwealth. It's a whole nation of nations, 53 nations, and we're so diverse, so many of us, different cultures. I'm Canadian, Brit, you know. Yeah, no, the Commonwealth doesn't want Brexit, Boris. And, and instead, we want to search for common unity, not, not disunity. Yes, I'm sure. Look, if Scotland goes, if, if Brexit goes ahead and Scotland leaves, they will join the Commonwealth as an independent nation, no doubt. They love, they love the Commonwealth. But they don't want to be part of the UK anymore. That's, that's a busted flush, as they say in, in cards. Yeah, no, there's nothing that can be done. So there were people at the conference from Mauritius, from Australia, from Canada, from India, Bangladesh, and so on. <clears throat> and the point of the Commonwealth Common Values Council is to find common solutions to common problems. Now, everywhere, ethnic conflict, racism, xenophobia, these are common problems affecting Commonwealth countries, and it's, it's wrong. So what we should not be doing in the UK, <coughs> we, we, our flag is premised on being an island of saints. We honour the multicultural textures of, of the United Kingdom. Yes, it was designed by James I, that's right, or James VI. He was an intelligent king. He wanted peace to be in his realm. And also in the whole of Europe. That's why he married one son to a Protestant, one to a, one to a, a Catholic. Yeah, so James, he brought the UK into being. Now, he doesn't want it to be broken up, Boris. And so this whole idea of being a one-nation conservative and doing Brexit, is, it's like saying I'm going to be dry water or I'm going to be cold fire. It's, it's a logical paradox. You can't be a one-nation conservative in that tradition and look James in the, in the eyes when you, you know, die and they're deciding where to send you. James is going to say, no, he's not coming in where I am. He's not coming into heaven, that guy. That guy that broke up my United Kingdom. No, send him somewhere else. And they'll send you, I, I promise you, to some sort of... Yeah, it'll be like a school polytechnic, you know, re-education thing. Yeah, and you'll get endless lectures in... In ethics, from people like me, you know, angel teachers. Now, I, I promise I will come, but, I mean, look, it doesn't have to be that way, Boris. You can change. Yeah. So, yes. <clears throat> and that's right. It is, look, come on, it's it's Christmas Eve, right? So, so um, yeah, so I'm going to, I yeah, happy Christmas to you and all, all your loved ones. Yeah, yeah. Now, I'm going to, I want to come to that at the end, but let me just explain what you could do, because I don't want you to go away thinking like doom and gloom and all that after this phone call. I want you to get the good news. Now, it's very simple. You've got this majority. You've convinced enough people that you're a good bloke. Well, now you can prove that you are a good bloke. You can say, look, folks, I've listened. I've talked to this advisor chap. He's explained to me why Brexit is a disaster. I've got the message. <clears throat> I finally realise it's going to lead to the breakup of the UK. Theresa May didn't have the courage to tell you this. I've realised it's going to happen. So I'm afraid because I'm a one-nation conservative, I'm going to cancel Brexit. And just do it. That's it. Just do it. And look, you're going to have to sack Dominic Cummings because he's the guy that's whispering in your ear, the evil genius chap. No, I want you to appoint me in his stead, Boris. That's the whole point of this phone call. I hope you've recorded this, by the way. Yeah, so look, <clears throat> if you sack Dominic... Um, you know, do it tomorrow, Christmas Day, then that's a present to the nation, right? 
Send me a send me a letter, you know, send me an email, that's fine. Yeah, thomasdaffin at gmail.com. Yeah, yeah. Send me a letter appointing me. Yeah, I don't um I tell you what, I don't even need much of a salary. I'll I'll do the job for the salary of the lowest paid nurse in the UK National Health Service, because I used to work in the NHS. And whatever the lowest <clears throat> trainee nurse is on, you know, I'll I'll accept that, right, as a symbolic gesture. Because I see this as a healing work. What's needed here is a healing work. <coughs> Dominic Cummings now, I think he'll probably leave the country, you know. I don't think he's he's gonna be welcome in any pubs or anywhere around the country. I mean the guy is, you know, no no. <laughs> Just, just get him out of the country and I'll come back as the advisor. That's right. And together we'll sort out a way to stop Brexit and we can give everybody a happy Christmas. Now, I know these people all want you to get Brexit done. That's right, Boris. You can twist it and say, I got Brexit done. I kicked it off the field. That's right. Brilliant. Masterstroke, eh? Okay? Because I realised I was going to break up the country. It's either, it's either Brexit or the UK. Which do you choose? Yeah, we'll get Brexit done. We'll kick it into the long grass. Yeah, well, look, we can set up a commission to inquire into whether it's possible to have Brexit and keep the UK together. That's right, have Scots on it, Northern Irish, Welsh and English from all the different regions. Point the great and the good. Non-party, of course, just intellectuals like me. And then they can inquire into it and they can have a five-year study and, no, they'll find out it can't be done. You can't keep the UK together and have Brexit. It's not possible. That's right. Yeah, but we'll set up a commission just to, like, prove what I'm saying is true. And we'll tell the British people, meanwhile, therefore, we've cancelled Brexit. Yeah, we're not we'll kicking it in the long grass, cancelling it, putting up a commission. Royal Commission, because Her Majesty has to be involved. She has to oversee this process. That's right. Yeah, no, I mean, the thing is, surely Her Majesty wants the best for her country, and that can't be the breakup of the country, can it? I mean, what if the Scots vote for a republic after independence? Yeah, I think it is quite likely, actually, Boris, yeah. Oh, and the nuclear weapons and all that, they'd have to go. That's just, I mean, they've got to go anyway, you, you realise that. That's worth a referendum on, in my opinion. Yeah, we don't need that because we are a spiritual nation of enlightened peace workers and truth warriors. Yes, the Druid thing, that's, that's where I'm coming from, Boris, you see, the truth speaking. And the Christian thing, and thank you. No, I, it's been a great conversation. I really enjoyed talking to you. And so, look, I'm going to finish with my little happy Christmas message, right? I know, I know uh, Elizabeth's talking tomorrow with her message. This is just my little last druid message. And it's been a delight to talk to you, Boris. Um, I'm so glad you've understood. Yeah, yeah. No, do sack that guy, Dominic, and just send me the email. <clears throat> I, I'd be honoured to, to work on the stop Brexit kicking into the long grass thing. Yeah, so look, because it's Christmas Eve, I want to finish with this little message. This is Jesus. Yeah, yeah, I've, I've been a Christian for ages. You know, it's something you're kind of born with. I, I've always loved Christian stuff. Even when I was a little boy at St. Mark's Primary School in Kemp Town, I was told the stories about, you know, the house, you can build the house on sand, it falls down, or you can build the house on rock, and it lasts. You know, kids can understand those kind of parables. I used to think, this guy, Jesus, he's cool. He's talking truth. And I had a great teacher at that school who, who was able to explain things in simple ways. That's right, you sort of feel it in your heart and it kind of warms you, doesn't it? Well, I've, I've never wavered in my faith. Uh, I was baptised later, yeah. And I know you, you were brought up a Catholic and then changed and became an Anglican. Well, yeah, I don't, you see, to me, I don't think it matters. I don't think God inspects your, your passport when you come into the kingdom. I think what he inspects is the heart and the integrity, and um, and the truthfulness. And, um, <clears throat> yeah, no, the Anglican thing, it's an honourable tradition. I am too. But what we don't want to do is break up our country. That would be, like, you know, a suicide mission. I mean, who in their right minds would do that, Boris? Yeah, I've been trying to explain that, yeah. Now, when I went to Scotland, I, I found Anglicans pretty, pretty thin on the ground, actually. Most of them are Church of Scotland, or Catholic. They don't really like Anglicans, there are hardly any left. They, the Church of Scotland people all, you know, they're not happy at all about Brexit, nor are the Catholics. They see it as an anti-Scottish, <clears throat> fanatical imposition of a sort of, yeah, a kind of a cult of Brexitism. And you've got to admit that it does look like that when you come abroad. So the question we should ask is, what would Jesus say about Brexit, right? That's my final present to you today on Christmas Eve. Okay, so look, <clears throat> well, I think we get a clue from what Jesus himself taught. 
all the Gospels agree that his ever first ever teaching was when he came of age, he went into the synagogue in Nazareth, where he'd been brought up, <clears throat> and he went in, and he stood up to read. They handed him the scroll of the prophet Isaiah, this is Luke, <clears throat> um, and it's chapter 4, 16. He stood up to read, unrolling the scroll, he found the place where it is written, and he read. The Spirit of the Lord has been given to me, for he has anointed me. He has sent me to bring the good news to the poor, to proclaim liberty to captives, and to the blind new sight, to set the downtrodden free, and to proclaim the Lord's year of favour. He then rolled up the scroll and gave it back to the assistant and sat down. Okay, so so now we know, Boris. Uh, yes, I, I don't know, when did the last time you read that? No, it's fascinating. I've done a whole commentary on the Gospels, actually. You can listen to on my Global Green University website. I mean, hours of it. I mean, I enjoy the Gospels. They're great. They're like artworks, okay? And they're so good at setting the scene. I mean, this is a gripping moment. There's Jesus teaching. Now, the point is, what does he choose to teach? So I want to just repeat the words. He says... The Spirit of the Lord has been given to me. He's descended on me. He's anointed me. Now that's what we Jews call the Arwen. That's the descent of the divine grace. <clears throat> and he sent me to bring the good news to the poor. Yeah, you heard me. Yeah, good news to the poor. Simple. So you see, there's no part of Brexit, there's no part of Brexit that brings good news to the poor. In fact, it brings terrible, dire, abysmal news to the poor. The poor will get poorer, and the rich, the very rich, will get richer. So I don't see, Jesus didn't say, um, he sent me to bring the good news to the oligarchs, to the super rich. No, <laughs> no, he's on the other side, Boris. That's the point I'm making, you see. <coughs> also, he goes on to say, to proclaim liberty to captives. Yeah, that's everybody who's imprisoned. And I don't think it just means people that are literally in prison. It means people imprisoned in their lives because they can't afford to do anything. They can't travel. They can't expand their horizons. They can't study properly, you know. They're captives of a, of a meanness in society and of a petty legalistic society that our culture has become. Yeah, that's not Christianity, is it? That's legalism. It's taken over our society. Well, Jesus didn't come, you know, I've come to bring... Uh, you know, uh, more keys for prisoners, more cells to build new prisons, to lock more people up, to pass new laws making all the things you like doing even more illegal. I've come to arrest refugees, to arrest immigrants and send them all back in chains on planes. Yeah. <clears throat> that whole pretty pretel kind of nonsense. Yeah, no, you've got to sack her, Boris. That, that's my first suggestion. Dreadful, dreadful kind of wrong thinking going on. No, no, no. He said, I've come to bring liberty to captives. That means a setting free, a lysis. Yeah, that Greek word, lysis, we know that, don't we? That's Greek word for enlightenment, setting free, releasing. Yes, I think an amnesty for everyone. Yeah, yeah. Cancelling the debts. Yeah, we we'll, can we'll talk about these grand gestures that you can do. And also, he says, I've come to bring the blind new sight. Yeah, yeah, it's... I mean, okay, it's like he was for the NHS. He wants people to have their eyes fixed, free glasses and stuff on the NHS. But also, I think, yes, I think you agree with me, don't you? Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, it's allegorical, right? It's, 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 it's to bring, that's right, new sight to the blind. That's, that's why I've rung you today, Boris, because I'm trying to, that's right, a philosopher, you see, I'm trying to bring new sight to people who maybe, I don't know, have you had many conversations like this? No, probably they, they, it's so sad when people get into this, like, you know, it's a channel tunnel. They, they can't see beyond that because they just go down the shuttle lines. Whereas <clears throat> I've tried to take you on a little bit of a tour here. And the Christ thing, the, the spirit of the Lord is upon me also to try and share that as a, as a philosopher. He goes on to say, and to set the downtrodden free. Yeah, all those people whose lives are made hopeless by Brexit. Yeah, and, and the poverty of, of many parts of Britain. Yeah, it's only going to get worse with Brexit, Boris. So you've got to cancel it. That's what I'm saying. Let's adopt this as the manifesto of the One Nation Tory party. 
You can even create some national coalition, invite the Lib Dems and Labour to join a national coalition of recovery, cancel Brexit, rebuild the nation. Have a constitutional convention that re reworks the constitution so it works for everybody. Put the Privy Council under parliamentary TV standards. Issue a, um, a, a duty of truthfulness to all parliamentarians and lords and members of the Privy Council, by the way. Yeah, I think there's a couple of foreign agents sneaked in there. You know, they're giving terrible advice. Yeah. And to proclaim the Lord's year a favour. So <laughs> that's what we want, isn't it, Boris? We want good news for the nation. And that's what we're celebrating today, Christmas Eve, because, you know, Mary is going into labour pretty soon. And that's the time of year when we all celebrate the birth of this little miracle called the Christ. Yeah, the saviour. Well, I've argued that that should be born in all of us. That that's the messianic consciousness that Christianity talked about. Yeah. Yeah. And, and uh, Pirabellus and Cicero and all the great schools of philosophy. You know, it's that Cicero called it, uh, you know, reason. Divine reason, yes. You look at his book on the gods. I don't know if you've read that recently. It's, I read it quite often. I love it. It's my supper time reading. On the gods. He talks about this divine reason that's in every human being. Whatever your status, slave or free, black or white, male or female. Divine reason in us all. And that's the basis for democracy and truth and, and, and love in society. Yeah, and it's a prefigurement of the Christ message. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so look, anyway, it's over to you now. Please sack Dominic, send me the letter of appointment. I'd be happy to work as your, um, you know, special advisor, you can call it. That's right, I just want, like, smallest little wage from the nurses. Oh, and a free flat somewhere in Westminster, please. That naval admiralty thing at the Admiralty Arch, that'll do. And, yes, well, to you too. And, and may, may this Christmas Eve bring blessings and... Uh, may these words of Christ come true. May we celebrate together liberty and good news for the poor. Yes, okay, thank you so much for talking, and uh, you better get back to Macron now. Lovely to talk, Boris. Okay, we'll talk soon. Bye. Gosh. Ah, well, that was a long call. Uh, sorry about that. Um, <clears throat> I, I, I gave the game away when I sent the camera. I think he must realise I recorded it, but... You know, anyway, um, <clears throat> well, interesting conversation. Um, I hope that uh, I won't go into all the details of what he said. You know, it's confidential, but I mean, I can record my side of it. We'll see if he sends me the letter. I, I mean, you know, I'm, ho I'm hoping because the guy is fairly intelligent. That's why I bothered to ring him. Um, and certainly his ancestors, you know, they, they are you know, jumping up and down on the heavenly clouds, grumbling about Brexit. I, I can't believe it. And then he's got another ancestor in his family tree as well that uh, translated all the works of Thomas Mann into English. Greatest German liberal intellectual of the 20th century. He wrote The Magic Mountain. And this ancestor of his, um, you know, translated them all into English, for God's sake. You know, he comes from very, very intelligent stock, does Boris. And that's why I've appealed to him. Um... I mean, and all of them were Europhiles to the bone. So he's really betrayed his own heritage here, and I feel really sorry for the guy. Power lasts but one brief second. Um, integrity and truth and dharma last for eternity. Anyway, let's see if he listens. I can only say my, my bit. I can only advise. I'm only a druid and a philosopher. Um, but anyway, and also can I say to all of you, all my faithful listeners and friends scattered far and wide may you also have a wonderful christmas may you um yeah may there be good news for you too and may the um, the divine light return in your life and in all our lives collectively and may we celebrate peace together this year and in the coming year